Join Mark and Trina Hankins as we start the new year off with three days of teaching on the spirit of faith. Get ready to receive the word, have your faith ignited, and to break the barriers in your life in 2024. You don't want to miss these powerful three days in our new conference center, January 9th through the 11th, 2024. For more information and to register, please visit markhankins.org. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. This morning, we're going to talk about a fundamental subject of Christianity, and that is the subject of eternal life, eternal life. And if you look at 1 John chapter 5, we'll get started there, and we're going to talk about life, the God kind of life, eternal life, what it is and what it does. And when you read the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, and Luke primarily teach on the kingdom of God. Matthew, Mark, and Luke on the kingdom of God. Uh, the Apostle Paul, his teachings center around who you are in Christ, in him, what happened when you made Jesus your Lord. Now you are in Christ and you look a lot better in Christ than you do outside of him. Amen. Amen. Our God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every person. Our God put into Christ what he wanted every person to have. Same life, same authority, same blessing. And so that's Paul's letters. But in the Gospel of John and in uh, John's epistles, the number one theme is eternal life. Or he uses the word life. We know the Greek word there is the word zoe, spelled Z-O-E, and it means the God kind of life. It is this life coming into the spirit of a man, the God kind of life that is the crowning achievement of the plan of redemption. It is a number one goal of the plan of redemption. The reason Jesus died, raised from the dead, is so that life could come back in to the spirit of a human being. It is. Number one goal of the plan of redemption is for you to be restored to life, the God kind of life, and it is that life that makes you a new creature or a new creation because it's a new kind of life. So if you have 1 John chapter 5, We'll just kind of start off here, 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, and a lot of similar verses like this, 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, says, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. You should underline that in your Bible. This is the record. In other words, what he's saying is the letter here, this is the record that God has given to us, what? Eternal life. And he says, and this life is in his son. He that hath the son hath life. Our other translations say, he that hath the son has this life. He that does not have the son does not have life. So this life is what we call a controlled substance. You cannot just get it anywhere. You have to get it from Jesus Christ. When you have Jesus, this is what you have is this life, the same life. We know John 10, 10, where Jesus said, I have come that you might have what? Life. life. Number one goal is that you might have life, the God kind of life. Uh, you could say it this way, the devil cannot dominate any man or any human being that has this life. 
Let's try that again. <laughs> the devil cannot dominate any man, anyone that has this life. The moment you receive this life, you pass from death to life. One translation says you leave death country and you enter life country. You leave the dominion of death, which he's talking about spiritual death, and you enter into a new realm, which is the God kind of life, life country. Amen? Amen. So the devil cannot dominate any person that has this life that knows what it is and knows how to put it to work for them. And so he says, he that hath the son hath this life. And then he says, look again at verse 13. If you don't have the son, you don't have life. Verse 13, he says, and these things have I written unto you that you believe on the name of the son of God and that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the son of God. Believe on the name of Jesus. And he said, I've written this to you so that you may know that you have what? We know we have eternal life. You know, think about that. That's a very powerful statement. We know we have eternal life. We know we have this life. So we travel all over the world and see a lot of people, different kinds of religions in different parts of the world. So one day I was just kind of looking because many of the religions have interesting books and philosophies and different kinds of lessons and teachings. And so the Lord said it to me this way. He said, every religion offers lessons. Every religion has their book. Every religion has their teachings, but only Jesus gives life. So Jesus came to do more than just give you another lesson. He came to give you the life of God, the God kind of life. Amen. So look at the gospel of John, John chapter five In John chapter five, again, looking in the gospel of John, studying this life and everything Jesus did was a demonstration and a manifestation of how this life thinks and talks and acts. Hallelujah. John chapter 5. And here's what it says in verse 24, John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me hath what? There's the word eternal or everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall, they're going to come alive. Look at verse 26. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. So if you were to interview God and ask him, what is it that you have that makes you the almighty God? What is it that you have that makes you shine like that with that glory? What is it that you have that makes you love the way you love? What is it that you have that you have so much of it you can't contain yourself? Because there's a river of it that comes right out of the throne of God and goes throughout the city of heaven. If you read the book by Rebecca Springer, uh, she said when she got to heaven, first thing she did is the angel took her through the river of life and it washed away all memory of sorrow or pain from her when she went through that river. She said, I actually went under through the river and it was over my head. And it washed away anything left from the earth life. Well, it's the God kind of life. God has so much of it that it overflows. Amen. Amen. So imagine Jesus saying, the Father has this life. 
He said, and I have this life, and I have come that you might have same life. Wow. Say that backwards. Wow. <laughs> Say it upside down, Mom. <clears throat> so the moment you make Jesus the Lord of your life, what happens? The new kind of life, which is the life of God, it is a spiritual substance. It's a spiritual substance that when any believer lays hands on the sick, that life will flow out of you. So what is this life and what does it do? Number one, uh, this life develops your spirit. Now you are a spirit, have a soul, living body, so it develops your spirit. Number two, it increases your intellect. Someone said that all the major inventions in, in history came from a country where they had eternal life. It makes you smart. It increases your intellect. It enhances your personality. In other words, when you have this life, you're free from comparison, competition. Come on. You've got the life of God on the inside of you. And you're an individual, and you bring a certain supply to the body of Christ. It actually sets you free from being self-conscious. There's some people are self-conscious. Some people are devil conscious. Some people are people conscious. Some people are unconscious. But when you have the life of God... It makes you God conscious. It's the number one need of humanity is to receive this life. When you receive this life, it changes the way you think. And this life also flows in your body, in your blood, in your bones. And that life will quicken your mortal body. All right, this is your confession. <laughs> I have the life of God in me. That life in me develops my spirit, increases my intellect, enhances my personality, flows in my body, drives out sickness and disease. I got the life of God in me. Praise the Lord. Now, my, my good friend, uh, Jay Dickey from Ohio, and he's married to Janice, who, uh, Abner, Yoder. Abner Yoder's daughter. And so he, he worked for uh, Yoder's whole construction company and ran uh, uh, one of the manufacturing plants. And Abner Yoder partners in many ministries. He's gone on to be with the Lord but he's still my partner. <laughs> Isn't that great? Anyway, he's in heaven. They still said, I'm still giving. So he is, his company do, you know, $150 million a year. Started off with just a hammer, just a carpenter building, you know, trusses. And he says, God showed him how. When you got the life of God on the inside of you, Amen. So Jay and Janice, they come to meeting sometimes. And so just a few months ago, um, uh, Jay, his uh, lungs, all the symptoms of the virus coming on him and his wife, Janice, uh, she was a nurse. So she got out stethoscope and she put it on him. She said, you're going to have to go to the hospital. Your lungs are filling up. You're going to have to go to the hospital. And Jay, you'd have to know him. He's a great, great country guy. And uh, he sat there for a while. Then he said, he jumped out of the chair and said, 
No, I've got too much of the life of God on the inside of me right now. She said, and he is well by the morning and went up, went and went back to work. So, when you know what you have, and then you make a bold confession of what you have. All right, go to 1 John 5, 4. Now, the devil trying to mess with you in some area of your life, you ought to say, no, I got too much of the life of God in me. 1 John 5, 4. And it says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Whatsoever is born of God. All right. I love what I heard Brother Copeland say not too long ago. And he said, there is victory in the new birth. All right, let's try that again. There's victory in the new birth. That means the moment you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you don't have to wait 10 years for victory. There's victory right there in the new birth. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Other translations say anyone who has been refathered by God. Come on now, how many glad you got refathered? In other words, come on, you got to know who your daddy is, right? I've been refathered by God. Then find out what runs in your family. <laughs> so you've been born of God, refathered by God. But other translations say anyone who has received the new life from God overcomes the world. So you got overcoming, overcoming life, and you've got overcoming in your new nature. You overcome the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. In other words, this life is activated by your faith. Woo! I've been born again. Come on, born of God. I've been refathered by God. Yes. Amen. My new identity is in Christ. Yes. Refathered by God. I have received the new life from God. Now notice 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. You know this verse. It says, fight. Yes. Amen. If you don't like to fight, you're not going to enjoy the benefits. But it's a certain kind of fight. Fight the good fight of, of faith. And then what's it say? Lay hold on eternal life. In other words, your faith accesses this kind of life and brings it into application. And then he says, and you have professed a good profession among many witnesses. In other words, the fight of faith is a fight that you win, right? And it, it, it contains a good confession, yeah. right? And it's got eternal life in it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, if you just knew what you got in you right now. Let's try it again. I said, if you just knew what you got in you right now. And you made a bold confession about it. And you taught your children what it is. Amen? Amen. All right, now let me read you a couple of definitions here of what this life is. Woo! Man, I'm telling you, just the introduction to this message is making me happy. Are you ready? Amen. All right, so let me give you Romans 8, 2 real quickly here. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Uh, the law of the spirit of life, and there's different ways. One translation amplifies says the law of our new being has made me free from the law of sin and death. Um, but when you're talking about the spiritual law, he said it is the law that operates 
in spiritual life. It is the law of the spirit of life. It is spiritual life, which is the life of God. And that life is spiritual life. Same thing that's in God. And there's a law that operates. The kingdom of God operates by certain laws. And you see how it operates. And he tells you in Romans how the law of the spirit of life operates. He said, it's made me free from the law of sin and death. Go ahead and look free, right? <laughs> there's another law operating stronger than the law of sin and death. It's the law of this life that is in Christ. And now it's in you. Praise the Lord. Can I tell my staff, I think, if you know you got this life in you and you declare it, it's going to make you smarter. So I'm expecting some better results. It'll make you more productive. It'll even make you creative because it's the life of God. Amen. Increase your intellect. Never say you're a slow learner anymore. All right. Well, one of the verses in Romans 8, I think it's verse um, 13. He says, though your body's dead because of sin or, or mortal, your spirit is alive. Your spirit is alive because of righteousness. That's Romans uh, 8, 13, I think. Interesting verse, isn't it? He says, your body's mortal or one day your body's going to die. He said, but your spirit is alive because of righteousness. In other words, the moment your righteousness was produced by the death of Christ, penalty paid in full, Jesus walked across a legal declaration that you have been declared righteous and gave you eternal life. Legally. Romans chapter 8, verse 10. So he says, your, your body's dead because him, but your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And verse 13 is where he says that you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body. So you're not just dealing with yourself natural to natural. You've got this law of the spirit of life operating for you. So he says your spirit is alive. And one translation says your spirit is instinct with life. Join Mark and Trina Hankins as we start the new year off with three days of teaching on the spirit of faith. Get ready to receive the word, have your faith ignited, and to break the barriers in your life in 2024. You don't want to miss these powerful three days in our new conference center, January 9th through the 11th, 2024. For more information and to register, please visit markhankins.org. You are watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Many religions offer lessons, but only Jesus Christ came to give life. Eternal life is not something you get when you die and go to heaven. Eternal life is something that happens in your spirit when you are born again. Eternal life is the divine nature of God. It is a spiritual substance that is in God himself. And when you get born again, we receive that same life. The great news is, as believers, we have the same life in us. Overcoming life, joyful life, victorious life, supernatural life. In his brand new book, The God Kind of Life, Pastor Mark Hankins will show you everything available as believers when you receive eternal life. Eternal life isn't just a place you will go someday, this God kind of life that's on the inside of you changes everything. In Christ, all things are new. For your gift of any amount, we'll also include Pastor Hankins' book, The Power of Identification with Christ. You have a supernatural identity. You must have a change of identity to reach your divine destiny. In the spirit of wisdom and revelation, God will show you who you are in Christ. Order this special package today. 
Your gift will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the brand new book, The God Kind of Life, and the book, The Power of Identification with Christ. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Mission Partners. Together we can, together we will. All religions give lessons. Only Jesus Christ gives life, eternal life. Hi, my name is Alicia Hankins Moran, and we're so glad that you joined us for the program today. And we pray that you were blessed and you were encouraged by the message you received from my parents. We have a special offer for you this week, and it is my dad's book, The God Kind of Life. We want this to get into your hands. And so for your gift of any amount, plus shipping, we will send this straight to you. So you can call the number on the screen or you can visit markhankins.org. Your gift of any amount helps my parents to continue to preach the gospel and to get the messages into publication. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries Faith for Every Nation. 